July 5th, 2023, Japan, Corican Hall, a man realizes a dream. I need to summarize Eddie Kingston in a paragraph before telling his story in AEW and what led up to that night in Japan, and all of that is difficult, so I'm just going to speak to how I see this guy. Eddie Kingston is, to me, real. He does not look like how you might imagine a professional wrestler to look. He is imperfect, he has anxiety, he is open about his mental health and the constant battle it is to maintain it. He has suffered through his life, yet he speaks from the heart with fighting spirit and he is, next to Hangman Adam Page, the most relatable wrestler for a lot of fans. He isn't perfect. He's himself, and goddamn, Eddie wouldn't want to hear it, but on the microphone and in the ring, he is great. In talking about Eddie, you could start with his 20 plus year career prior to signing with AEW, but for now we need to look to the summer of 2020. In a promo, he casually mentions AEW's TNT title open challenge, calling out then champion Cody. Rhodes. Eddie gets invited to AEW for a one-off to fight Cody Rhodes, but his only response to what would become his tryout match that will land him the greatest success of his professional career is, how much does it pay? Guys gotta make rent. A real guy with real struggles in this cold, cold world. Eddie debuts not with music, but screaming into a microphone, no, 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 as he tears into Cody verbally and then with thumbtacks, brutal chops, and a desperation you can feel through the screen. But as the match starts and Justin Roberts says, introducing the challenger, Eddie kisses his rosary and attacks Cody from behind. That is the Mad King, introducing the challenger indeed. Eddie trends on Twitter after this match, which while he has said in interviews isn't real, the outpouring of support and demands to hashtag sign Eddie Kingston very much is. Now signed on national television, Eddie Kingston can truly begin to show all of us what he's capable of. And he does. Eddie steadily grows in popularity coming out of the pandemic, challenges John Moxley, an old friend, for the world title. Together, the two cutting the greatest, most heartfelt promos in the history of the world title scene up to that point. And he loses. And Eddie keeps losing, despite a fantastic performance against CM Punk, where... This is a moment I need to dwell on because it means a lot to me. At the start of the match, CM Punk blusters down to the ring, Eddie staring a hole through this supposedly much bigger star. CM Punk, in new gear with a fresh cut right before the bell, turns briefly for just one moment to the referee, and Eddie looks at the man who has called him on national television a bum, dismissed his entire existence, and he sees one second of weakness, and... Saving grace for CM Punk. That scream of joy, of rage, of releasing fear and finding in its place something else. Eddie in that moment became more than just a wrestling character for me. He became a feeling, inspiration. I think about that scream every time I see Eddie, and I can't help but smile at this moment, at someone in the right place at the right time doing what he loves. Eddie loses that match. A few months later against Chris Jericho, Eddie, still on a losing streak, is confronted by yet another seemingly bigger star claiming he cannot win the big one. And now we need to take a moment to discuss Eddie Kingston and his admiration for Japanese professional wrestling. Eddie's dream as a wrestler seemed to never be to main event in WWE, but to make it in Japan, a place whose wrestling saved him, kept him hooked on the magic of strong style, old school, all Japan pro wrestling. And it's that young man watching his heroes that Eddie calls upon to fight Y2J himself. Chops in the corner from Kenta Kobashi, a spinning backfist Uriken from Aja Kong, and finally he taps out the first undisputed champion and first AEW world champion Chris Jericho with a stretch plum courtesy of Kawada. And after the match, Eddie is confused. Why are people screaming? Why is Aubrey stopping him? Chris couldn't have tapped out. I won, we see him asking, and the commentary breaks to point this out. A beautiful moment in his story, reflective maybe of his own disbelief that he is even here at all. And while spotty booking and injuries complicate his journey from there, the crowd is always delighted whenever Cold World hits, Eddie remains over. He keeps moving forward, 
just like he's always done. And then, gradually, Eddie starts to challenge and be challenged by excellent wrestlers from Japan, from Tomohiro Ishii, a lovable fridge that came to life and decided to kill everybody. To Jun Akiyama, who Eddie professed in an interview was his pie-in-the-sky dream match. Eddie, who at one point was selling his gear during the pandemic at the end of that 20-plus year indie run to make ends meet, is now being paid well to be on national television and wrestling his idols. Despite any criticism of the dude that anyone could ever throw his way, he has already won professional wrestling. After all of this, the struggle, the joy, the interviews, the miles, it all leads Eddie to that fateful night only a few weeks ago, Eddie wins a New Japan title, defeating Kenta for the strong title. In front of a Japanese crowd who he has never performed in front of mind, they are yelling out their love for him. This is the world to him. But to let Eddie say it himself... I'm not supposed to be here. I should have been killed. I should have been in jail, but I didn't because of pro wrestling. Because of Japanese pro wrestling. If I can do it, Anybody can do it. Eddie is right now competing in the G1 Climax Tournament, a legendary wrestling tournament in Japan, and doing AEW, and crucially, himself, proud. So yeah, watch this silly little video about me talking about a wrestler I like, but then just go watch Eddie tear it up in New Japan. Him and Shingo Takagi is just amazing, not just in match quality, but what it means to watch someone achieve their dreams. YouTube isn't real. Twitter isn't real. Eddie Kingston is real. Even more importantly than that, I have never seen a wrestler talk so openly, so honestly, so genuinely, and so helpfully about their mental health. Eddie is doing more to spite the worst of the old generations than to just wrestle how he does, or look how he does, or talk like he does. He is spiting them by being better than them. And I am thankful. It's why I made this. I made this just to say, thank you, Eddie.